Now, some efforts are going on in Bangladesh, and I would uh, like to invite Mr. Deloarvesen, who has been the pioneering, the first man who uh, founded a Bangladesh China center, uh, so, so that you can make China Bangladesh center. We did it many years ago, you know, but uh, US Bangladesh, now the Japan Bangladesh, now China Bangladesh. So here is, I invite you to just uh, talk something about this your center. It's about the human relationship and how we should build up. Mr. Delors, he is the, he is the president of that uh, organization. Good evening, uh, respected General Munir Zaman, retired, the uh, leader of the United Bangladesh Forum, Mr. Hua Frank from Kudmi, the leader of the Chinese uh, side, the chair of the session, Dr. Atiu Rahman. Dr. Atau Rahman, sorry. Dr. Atau Rahman. You are better than the government. Sorry, I made the mistake. Atau Rahman, not Atau Rahman. So, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all and my heartfelt respect and congratulations to you all for attending this seminar. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to give thanks uh, to Mr. Munir Zaman and also Mr. Hua Fang and others, those who have taken the initiative for forming the Kunming Dhaka Forum. This is a people's to people's contact, I think. What we are dreaming, what we are thinking, the second track, beside the government, we should have the people-to-people -people contact. And this center has manifested the expectation of the people-to-people's -people's contact. I will not take much time. But you know, the, uh, while you are talking about Bangladesh and China, it requires some more explanation. To me, <coughs> I am as the president of Bangladesh-China Friendship Center. Uh, this organization was formed in 1995. And before that, from 1975, when China recognized Bangladesh, who are working for the friendship with the China. And why I respect and have an alienation or an affection to China? Because China is the first country in Asia having a democratic revolution. Even before the Russian revolution in 1911, under the leadership of Dr. Sunny Sen, the <coughs> democratic revolution was taken place. Then the people of China has fought against the feudalism. Then the people of China has had a long 14 years fight against the Japanese aggression. And during that time, the fight of the Chinese people against the World War II leaders like Japan has saved our country. Otherwise, this aggression would have expanded to this level. Not only that, even after the formation of the uh, new China, there is the People's Republic of China in 1949. China has a long fight against the imperialist people. They are blocked to enter into the UNO till 1970. A 21 years fight international level. It's very unfortunate that China has brought back the Taiwan in, in 1945 after the World War II, but they could not enjoy the uh, victory over the Taiwan. Rather, the Taiwan become a problem for China. <laughs> it has become the center of the imperialist people to destroy the mainland China government. 
So we had many things to praise about the China, and we love China. And finally, the great leader, uh, and uh, he got an affiliation with the Union, the Kunming, the Dengxi of being married to <laughs> Kunming. <laughs> so the great leader who has transformed the China into a new modern superpower in the world. So now, what we have learned from China, that a democratic people have the right to have establish the democracy. People have the right to eliminate the <laughs> eliminate the uh, <coughs> hegemonism. Brother Deloal, please focus on your yeah. organization. Yeah. Yeah. So be happy. Uh, now, Bangladesh is a country is very close to China. Is as per the our present ambassador. It is only three marathon. There is 120 kilometers. So the Bangladesh northern border from China is only 100 kilometers uh, across India and Nepal. So China and Bangladesh has many things to learn each other and many things to cooperate each other. I personally visited. Uh, Kunming in 1998, I think at that time, very few people have visited Kunming. And I, we had a long meeting with the highest governor of the uh, Kunming at that time. And after that I came, I made a big letter to our government, our foreign ministers. And then he started the Kunming initiative one side and otherwise the for establishment direct link, year link, Kunming Dhaka flight in 2006. So many, many things now we have got with many things, especially with the union. And union, many, uh, I have visited uh, Kunming uh, quite a few times. I have gone to Lijiang, I have gone to Sangrila, many, many places. So, union for tourism itself, Kunming is a, one of the famous places in the world to have the uh, tourists to go because the weather, the climate, the proximity. Now they have developed the infrastructure. Earlier there was no infrastructure, so now it is a and the direct link from Dhaka to Kunming definitely has contributed a lot to get more tourists in Kunming. So we had the contribution for that. You know, for uh, China and Bangladesh, uh, we have uh, many things to share. Especially uh, in the tourism sector, one thing uh, I found, the Chinese government initiative for the Silk Road, the maritime uh, Silk Road, one bell, one road. But there is one more road, that is the tea horse road for Kunming people used to produce the tea in Kunming and they used to sell it in the Nepal, the cold area like Tibet and Bangladesh. And they used to go through the river Bhopaputra and Bangladesh. And you know, the Nepal is the birthplace of the Lord Gautam Buddha. And this Bangladesh is a part of the Buddhist monastery, the Mainamati, Paharpur, and uh, Jagdal, many, many places of the Buddhist um, And China has a lot of followers of the Gautam Buddha. Besides, this is the Bangladesh is the birthplace of Atish Dipankar, Srigyan. So this uh, prospect, uh, because many people of China, those who follow the Gautam Buddha, want to see the birthplace of the Lord Buddha. So that can be a very big tourist destination. Similarly, many people from Bangladesh and China and Nepal, they want to go to uh, China and people are going. So we have many places, many things we can share. But you know Bangladesh is a poor country economically still. So the Chinese businessman should come and invest for making the hotel 
for resource, for road, for tunnel. Then the cooperation will be meaningful. Many, many, uh, uh, many, many uh, cooperation is the uh, opportunity is there. You know, this year, Chinese government has taken a special 100 students from Bangladesh to teach them the Chinese language. They will come back and teach Chinese in Bangladesh. So this will also open a lot many opportunities. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Delwar, uh, if you have one minute, uh, I just give you one minute. You finish by saying something about your organization. Yeah. Please do. So, uh, Actually, this is a, not a place to describe many things. So uh, maybe in other opportunity we will say. And regarding our organization, Bangladesh China Friendship Center, we are promoting in many, many fields the exchange of culture. Uh, just this month, uh, we have received the 10 artists from Hunan province. They have left uh, Dhaka on 14th. Uh, uh, they were there for, here for 10 days. So we are working for the promoting of the French at the people's level. So many thanks. I think uh, with this forum's meeting, uh, some new initiative will be taken place. And I welcome you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm sorry because we have to finish. Uh, uh, and then we have some questions. And so, uh, but we want to just share uh, some of these uh, ideas. Uh, but. Now the floor is open for questioning and then I will have a, just a quick summary. And then we will go for the tea and uh, conclude this session. So please. Please identify yourself and then just uh, ask the question or a comment. Okay. I am Janatun Tajwin uh, from University of Dhaka. Uh, I want to add uh, uh, a short, uh, short brief uh, uh, promoting an alliance of civilizations and encouraging uh, intercultural dialogue uh, are as important tools in promoting understanding, respect, and tolerance among religious and cultural communities and uh, combating stereotypes and dismantling prejudice and all sides. So, um, we partners in the local communities do choose for collaboration and what objectives should uh, one aim for? This is my question. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's collect some questions and then uh, somebody will answer. Yes, please. Please tell your name. Uh, as I said before, I'm Tanjila Tawassum from International Relations, Dhaka University. My question is, uh, throughout this Yunnan Bangladesh Forum, can we expect a very strong and prominent platform for youth exchange programs, scholarships, university exchange programs, especially for IR students? Thank you. My question, uh, My question is to Rebecca. Uh, first of all, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Very impressive. Uh, what steps should we take to attract the Yunnan tourist flow to Bangladesh, particularly from Yunnan? What What are the ways we can attract them more? What infrastructural development we should do? And what are the other regimes we should follow? I know that this forum was also was one of the contributing factors for which the Bangladesh Consulate in Kunming has been opened because we have been fighting for it after every forum. We wrote to the government, we met the foreign ministry people. So this forum has its utility in shaping policies. So what are the steps you think we should take? Now you can answer. Yes. So, Thanks, Mr. Uh, Moni Zuzan. Give me a good uh, <laughs> uh, praise. I, I thank you very much. And these questions, I think, is a very good questions. As myself, I have uh, three points. First, we need propaganda. I mean, just give an announcement for the Bangladesh. As myself, I like Bangladesh very much because it's a very beautiful and 
abandoned resources uh, for the tourism because it's a special for the sea and also the uh, more potentials between the Yunnan and also Bangladesh. So the first, we need announcement and a very perfect plan for the announcement because you just make plan for the people who just uh, live in the mountain area. So th that is my first uh, suggestions. The second, we just make some plans that how to absorb the people from domestic, uh, from China, domestic market. Because most of the uh, people from Yunnan have a new, uh, how to say, influence and also new um, uh, phenomena. They like to be visited in the border countries. That is very new. I think this is a good opportunity for the Bangladesh. Uh, some people, uh, they prefer to Thailand. Why? Because their uh, infrastructure is much better. For example, the housing and also the tourism uh, apartment department. So it's very easy, it's very convenient. So as myself, if you want to uh, have some plan to build the tourism infrastructures and also uh, some hotels, that would be much better. Make plan for that. Yes. Yeah. The third. <laughs> okay. The third. I think maybe we just build the BCIM tourism circle. Why? We can absorb outside people from all the countries. Because the people, they have a lot of toys. If they just stay at one country or one place, that will be sometimes very boring. Because that is a new phenomenon for us. That is, they can choose different, um, different uh, tourism resources. So that is my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you like to also answer uh, one question from her? Uh, she's a student of international relations. Uh, or, you know, uh, uh, if you are. Uh, or the next. Yunnan是政府奖学金在每年都在增加 uh, so actually, um, um, Mr. Oh, just, uh, um, sorry, uh, answer the second <laughs> question actually, and then, uh, he just mentioned that uh, for the scholarship of uh, what uh, in, to your interest, that to, uh, the Rina provincial government has a lot of the new policies for this, especially the education exchanges for the visiting scholar and also and any other professional yeah, training in both Korean and vice versa in your country. Uh, 那么我们提出一个设想,能不能在我们这个梦中应免,在这个经济走廊的这个框架之内,实行当一千证的这样一个机制,就如同在欧盟申根国家,它就不存在这个这个这个边界了,只有一个只有一个申根协定,呃任何
I'd like to begin uh, from uh, what Mr. Fang said uh, about the visa. You see the thing, one of the reasons why, um, I mean, um, we, I mean, Yunnan province doesn't draw uh, lots of tourists from Bangladesh is the visa issue. You see, it is very easy to uh, visit Malaysia, Thailand, and all these places. And uh, my experience living in Kunming and other places of Yunnan, which is much, I also lived in Singapore for eight years. So Yunnan is a much more beautiful uh, place, I mean, to my mind. And if you can ease the visa regime, we, we don't need to, you know, wait what will happen within BCIM. I think bilaterally we can do something, you know, is issuing more visa, particularly tourist visa. So once you see more and more Bangladeshis are going Yunnan province, then this will enhance trade and all these things. And uh, to respond, a younger colleague uh, I mean, who uh, came to a study in China, my experience and what I have noticed is that for the last, I mean, in the last few years, we see that lots of Bangladeshi students actually are going to Yunnan and other parts of China. And one of the springboard is to learn basic Chinese language two, three months in Bangladesh. And you will find lots of avenues through Confucius Institute of North South University, Dhaka University Language Institute. And in addition to whatever, I mean, the Chinese government has scholarship, you will find uh, in Kunming, nowadays, lots of Bangladeshi students. So, the, actually, the flow has started. My final point is, uh, I mean, what General Munir Jawan uh, also mentioned, how we could draw more Chinese, uh, you know, tourists uh, to Bangladesh. I'm wondering, you see, the thing is, this whole block, if you, if you visit Kunming, Bihar, Bangladesh, Myanmar, everywhere you will see the huge Buddhist influence. And this is one of the reasons now Sri Lanka is drawing lots of Chinese uh, tourists. So can we do something using Buddhism as a building block uh, in within BCIM country? Uh, yes, yes. So if uh, you know Sri Lanka can uh, draw lots of Chinese, uh, you know, um, tourists, I think we all, we also have that Mr. Dalwar said that lots of uh, historic, you know, the Buddhism sites. Probably we have not, you know, the uh, circulated about the, these things in Yunnan province. So we need to do something on this. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mr. Sahadu. I just do agree with what you have said. And also, I want to uh, answer uh, Mr. Roman. You just talk why Chinese students don't choose Bangladesh. But tell you the good news. Yesterday, I see three people. They just come from China, Yunnan. But the only pity thing is 
they couldn't speak English. So that is I want to mention. The language is very important. And also some people said uh, the Chinese tourism, they vis visit the Bangladesh. They hope the Chinese tourism, tourism guide. But it's sad if the people who can speak Chinese is very expensive. <laughs> so I think maybe uh, for the schools, our duty is just teach Bangladesh people to speak Chinese, and our duty is teach Chinese people speak English and the Bangladesh language. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for. Uh, Actually, uh, maybe I, I can just say something about the also tourism. Uh, the, about the visa uh, approval, because I have very good relationship with the new uh, consul general in Kunming. Uh, his name is Ali, Ali, and the former one is Lady. And when Ali arrived in Kunming, he just uh, approved the visa about uh, uh, five times as much as the former one. So he said that he also increased already a lot of the people visiting uh, Bangladesh. Thank you. And also, we'd like to ask again for the first no. yeah, question. Sorry for that. I will answer that. So she talked about uh, intercultural uh, civilization, uh, tolerance, and stereotyping, and dialogue, and dialogue. dialogue. How to uh, how to build bridges between cultures, civilization. Do you think dialogue will bridge the differences? Is the dialogue? Is the dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a broad theoretical question. Can answer or it's a big question. Okay, it's a big question. Uh, we'll talk about it uh, later on. Uh, thank you very much for all of your e. Uh, I just, uh, as a uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to reflect on the great civilization which is China, and the great people which is China. And also, I must say, as a political scientist or international relations uh, uh, st student, that China is also a ruthless power, you see. It's not an easy power. It's not a soft power. It's a strong nation, you see. I saw many Americans <coughs> were just snapped by Chinese stand there, you know, and they have to stand like this. So, it's the, the pride of a nation, you see, that's not easy. Of course, it's not easy uh, for a nation to be uh, more a human character, you see. So, uh, the rising nation, as theoretically, both China and India are also ruthless powers, you see. So, we have to understand that. So, unless my position is very clear, you see, whatever we talk about the dialogue and Yes, there will be some realization. Like we may go up from 25 billion to 41 billion in garments, maybe another five years. But we will never attract tourism from China, which will be worth 10 billion. So I think that, unless we are prepared. So my point is a nation like us cannot globalize, cannot be a real partner unless we have our own strength, strength of our democratic institutions, our governance structures, and finally our economic strength. That's more important than any other things in the world. And that's why I also appreciate the foundation of all of these, is the proper education, technology, and also commitment to the people. And that's why uh, I would score that uh, we have to be a highly motivated nation, you see. But uh, we should also learn from Ch China, and we should also unlearn China. We have to learn the good things, but we should not also follow, you know, many things which Chinese follow. Like, you know, the corruption syndrome your country had, we should not follow. But we should watch that how China is improving its human rights record, you see. So when you say good governance to us, we'll also talk that China should also be well governed with human rights, 
you know, dignity of people. So those things are also very important for us as a nation. You see. So we we must globalize on that. And uh, finally, I just uh, in 19, 2001, I first visited China. So when I talked, uh, somebody, some Chinese asked me, where are you from? So I said, Bangladesh. And he could not sure whether I'm from other Africa or you know, other country or America because somebody thinks so I said Bangladesh. He changed very quickly, very soft. You see. And she said, Oh so I thought that this is a good thing. That the whole concept of Bangladesh people is very soft in Chinese heart, Chinese mind. And that we have to capitalize. That I think we have a strength there. So uh, we have to take that. But at the same time, China will not sit idle. If Bangladesh doesn't cooperate, they will cooperate with Africa. And uh, as we see, China is going very fast to Africa. So we as a nation should, uh, and it's a part of our dialogue, to strengthen the structures of both of us, of cooperation. <laughs> so, thank you very much. And then finally, uh, my experience for many years about the language, <coughs> I fully agree that we should have more institutes to learn our language. We should have more institutes in Yunnan <coughs> to learn some Bangla. Yes, we have. Yes. <coughs> okay, good. So that will pave the way for future cooperation. Thank you very much for all your uh, presence and we will see you again. Yes. We will now uh, break for refreshments and that will bring us to the end of the program. On behalf of the organization, I just want to make one quick point. All the remarks made uh, in this dialogue in the individual presentations are those of the individuals. So uh, the institute does not subscribe to any individual opinions per se, but these are all individual opinions. This is a dialogue, so we wanted people to speak freely. Uh, would, you, uh, would you like to just finish and then have tea or has tea? Uh, I think finish I think uh, we will take another couple of minutes just to summarize and then we can break and have tea at all. That will be better. Okay. So with the, with the permission of Mr. Hall, we will just now take the next 10 minutes or so just to summarize everything and have any last minute thoughts. And I would like to say that we have had a very stimulating day with very interesting discussions. And a lot of new thoughts have come on the table. Some of the ideas are individual ideas, but there are also ideas that we can take home. What I intend to do also is to, at the end of the day, is to summarize everything. And we will send you the draft by email for you to see the summary. We will also try to take a note of the summary and turn into a very brief Dhaka declaration so that we can take the key points of the summary and highlight that in the Dhaka declaration. Both of which will be sent to you within a week by email. Once you go through the summary and the declaration and approve it or change anything, then we will release it. We will release it through all means, we will send it to the press, we will send it on our website, we will also share it with the concerned policy makers of Bangladesh government. So the key highlights that we take away from the conference, we will be sending it at the summary, but I can just mention as, in, as they come from my head, is that one of the key emphases of the first session was that on building connectivity. The basic route to increase trade volume, increase cooperation, increase economic activity was through building more effective connectivity and multimodal connectivity. So that is a point we will be emphasizing a lot. We will study the concept or the proposal made by Mr. Islam about current swap and see if that is practical. 
And that is the point. If it is practical, we will also mention on that. We will touch on the aspect of the trade volume vis-a-vis -vis the balance of payment, which is negative on the Bangladesh side and heavily to the, to the Chinese side of the positive. So we will try to find out what are the ways we can work so that we can have a more balanced balance of payment. Balance of trade. Balance of trade. Uh, in the second session, we see that the, both the presentation, presentations brought many concrete ideas to meet the challenge of militancy and terrorism that we face today. And a number of good ideas have come on the table that we can build, like sharing intelligence, like having joint exercises, like building social resilience to face militancy and terrorism. We talked about having joint training. We talked about carving terrorist financing. We talked about the cyberspace as a tool for radicalization that must be monitored and stopped. So a number of good concrete proposals have come from both Ms. Zhu and Shavkat Munir from Bangladesh side. We will take the basic summary of those and highlight them in our summary and also take them to the declaration. In the last session, we have had excellent ideas coming from both the speakers, especially from Rebecca, and we will try and highlight how we can build more effective people-to-people -people contact through education exchanges, through cultural contacts and exchanges, and particularly build the bridges of tourism. I was particularly impressed with the idea in the morning session by the delegation leader when he talked about mountain to sea tourism and those are the ideas we like to those are new ideas fresh ideas we like the idea of this building tourism circle of bcim countries we like the innovative ideas of a bcim visa corridor we like the idea of bringing pulp tourism to bangladesh both in the form of social tourism in the form of religious or buddhist tourism so I'm very impressed with the number of new ideas and thoughts that have come on the table. And if some of them are implemented, we'll make a long way in progressing in a bilateral relationship, which can be extremely beneficial for both the people of Yunnan, China, and for Bangladesh. So with those very few words, I would like to now turn it over to Mr. Howe to have your thoughts so that with your thoughts we can then finish. And once again, my very warm thank you to all of you for taking the time to come to Bangladesh. This is a meeting between friends. And this is a meeting between two people who are very close to their hearts. Given our historical relationship, our current brotherly relationship, or a sisterly relationship, to be more correct. <laughs> we can take our relationship to absolutely new heights. And there is no reason we cannot achieve that for the benefit of our two people. I hope that the forum will make the rightful contribution in the policy making of the two countries. Because we have seen in the previous forum a, a number of our recommendations have seen implementation. And therefore, I'm very hopeful that it is not only between meeting between two organizations of two countries, but this have definite concrete contribution to policy making. I am looking forward to the next forum in Kunming, where we can again generate more new ideas next year. So, thank you very much for coming to Bangladesh and come and visit us anytime you feel like. Thank you. Xie xie. Uh, fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. After the holiday uh, warm discussion, the full session of the Yunnan Bangladesh Cooperation Dialogue Forum has 
uh, achieved a grateful and a successful outcome. And all scheduled agenda is about to end. During the forum, the delegates conducted in-depth and warm discussion around the issues such as establishing cooperation mechanisms to promote growth and friendship, new outlook of economic and trade cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh in the context of the One Belt and One Road, tackling the challenges building anti-radical and anti-terrorist strategic cooperation, and establishing the platform for peaceful and harmonious development. As the achievement of the long-term research and careful consideration, the positive proposals from the experts broaden our horizons, expand our minds, and further enhance our confidence and deter determination to promote the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. At the time when the forum was almost to come to an end, I want to talk about some of my feelings. First of all, the dialogue meeting couldn't, couldn't have been upgraded to a forum without the attention and active support from the government. The Yunnan Bangladesh Cooperation Forum was initiated in October. 2007 by the Yunnan Development and Research Center, YDRC, and the Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies, uh, the BIPS. Since then, the two sides launched dialogues, deepened mutual understanding, enhanced mutual trust and friendship, and decided to set up together a stable exchange and a cooperation mechanism. The fourth cooperation dialogue meeting was upgraded to a forum, which fully shows the important position of the forum that has been recognized by the governments of both sides. We hope that the two sides will further strengthen exchanges and promote cooperation in various fields. Secondly, the forum reached a lot of consensus in a friendly atmosphere. In the first place, the forum is significant in promoting the friendship and cooperation between China and Bangladesh. Yunnan province plays an important role in cooperation with Bangladesh. We should build a long-term stable cooperation mechanism on this basis and reach more consensus in future cooperation. Also, in the second place, the land passageway between Yunnan province and Bangladesh is actually in need of the improvement. The two sides have reached a consensus on accelerating the construction of passageway between Kunming and Chitgong, and more efforts will be made to facilitate the BCM Economic Corridor South Line scheme. Third, 
In the also in the third place that uh, the Yunnan and Bangladesh cooperation should be enhanced. Uh, although uh, actually just covering a wide area, both countries, especially Bangladesh, has a population of nearly 170 million and has the highest density of population among the populous countries, which has a population of more than 50 million. In the past 11 years, Bangladesh GDP average growth reached about 66% without consuming excessive resources. From the perspective of the development and resources, the two sides have open direct cargo flights and are strongly complementary to each other in economy. We should further expand mutual openness, innovate, innovate, innovate mode of the cooperation, enhance trade and investment facilitation, develop the cooperation in tourism, agriculture, and other aspects, and promote the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh to a new stage. Also, in the first place, the delegates believe that we should continue to carry out pragmatic cooperation in multiple levels and forms with education, tourism, and cultural cooperation as the forerunner, so as to further enhance mutual understanding and trust. And we would like to also just uh, carry out some pragmatic uh, projects in financing and also the uh, countering of the terrorists. So that we can build up a strong cultural foundation for the cooperation. Certainly, the achievements of this forum will actively promote the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. During the forum, the experts and the scholars from both sides express their opinions freely, putting forward many quite constructive comments and suggestions, and making clear the significance of further promoting the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. The meeting was very fruitful. As an important window of the communication between Yunnan and Bangladesh, the forum spread information, promoted feelings, strengthened mutual trust, and enhanced the friendship. I do believe the insights of the delegates in the forum will play a more and more important role in further perfecting the cooperation mechanism and promoting the exchanges and the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. Finally, I would like to, on behalf of Chinese participants here, express my heartfelt thanks to Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies BIPS, for the hard work and thoughtful arrangements. Thank you very much. Wish to see you next year in Kunming.